talking out of my ass. Number 52. And this is my 52nd talking from my anus. The notes. Well, first of all, I'm not caffeinated, so this is probably going to turn out like shit. I haven't eaten anything. It's like uh, 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm about to break fast. That's the name breakfast. Break fast. I want to break my fast. <clears throat> but I got to beat the rush hour traffic, so I can't then have time to eat breakfast. Oh well. Anyways, I was at Chipotle, right? About three days ago. And uh, it's like Chipotle, they always got to make you fight for the protein, right? Like they always try to be fucking cheap about that shit, right? So like one of the the help the one of the servers or whatever the fuck he is, right? He starts like throwing me like this fucking like if you were in a third world country, the amount of meat he would have you, you, you threw him threw on my threw on my plate, it would have been alright. But since this is first world country, you know, we tend to be bigger, we got more muscle mass to, to maintain. We need a, a little a little bit extra as far as the meat goes, right? Even that extra protein. What, he, he, what, he, what, what does he do? He throws a third world fucking portion size on me, right? A couple little slivers on this big bowl of rice. I usually get the burrito bowl at the fucking Chipotle. He throws a little sliver, a couple slivers of meat on there, right? And I'm like, yo, man, this ain't the third world. Can you throw me an egg? Can you throw me, I mean, why, why you gotta be so fucking cheap with the fucking meat, bro? He's a little Mexican guy or Ecuadorian. I don't know what the fuck he was. <clears throat> so he goes in with this fucking, his fucking uh, tongs or whatever. Grabs another fucking glob of meat, right? Slaps on my fucking bowl of rice and beans, right? So I get to the cashier. And uh, it's like... 13, 14 bucks. Usually I pay like $8 for that shit, right? Okay, and I asked the cashier, why the fuck is this so high? Can you itemize that receipt for me? She says, okay. Uh, $6.95 for the burrito bowl. Uh, $1.50 for the guacamole. And $3.15 extra for the extra meat. I said, wait a minute. Oh, I, I didn't ask for the to be charged an extra three fifteen. I mean that, that that Mexican or whatever, that Ecuadorian down down there, he just, he just threw me a couple slivers of meat on the fucking bowl of rice, right? And uh, and then uh, she's like, uh, well, you know, whatever. You want me to make a new one? I said, no, nah, no, nah, I'll just pay for it, whatever, right? I mean, you know, then, then I'm like, I'm digging out my credit card, and as I'm digging out my credit card, you know, I started like going off a little bit on the Mexican. I'm like, man, that little Mexican, he just throwing me like third world portions on my fucking rights, right? You know, I mean, you know, this ain't Ethiopian shit, right? And then some customer to the left of me, right? I'm at the cashier. He's like next in line to pay to the cashier. He starts like going in on me. He's like correcting me and shit. Well, you know, uh, you know, portion size is only six ounces, you know, uh, I, you know, I, he was giving you a six ounce portion and, uh, you know, well, what he did was threw you another six ounces out there. So that makes 12 ounces. I'm like, I'm like looking at him and this guy in this, in the fucking, in, in disbelief. He's like, a, he's, he's got about a six inches on me and shit, wearing a cap with uh, some glasses, right? kind of look Hispanic. Maybe you took offense to what I was saying about the Mexican, right? And, uh, I go off on this guy. I'm like, what, bro? Who the fuck are you, bro? 
Like right, right in the middle of this Chipotle restaurant. It's like lunch rush hour. The place is just packed. I got the cashier like yelling at me. You're holding up the line. And I'm, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. This guy somehow feels the need to comment on what the fuck my comments are all about. Like he's making a commentary on, on he's like doing a play-by-play. Uh, you know, a, a, a fucking uh, a, a play-by-play analysis. He's like, well, you know that the Mexican, the, the, the guy, you know, he was six ounces. Now you want twelve ounces. You know, those are portion sizes. Regular size portion, six ounces. I'm like, man, dude, who the fuck are you, bro? Like, I'm, I'm yelling at the top of my lungs. Who the fuck are you? Why the fuck are you fucking with me? Why are you start shit with me in this goddamn restaurant, bro? Why are you start shit with me, right? Then the cashier, I guess she was a manager, right? She started taking away the burrito bowl. I'm like, no, no, I'll pay for it. I'll fucking pay for it. She's like, no, I don't want anybody cussing in my restaurant. No cursing. I said, okay, okay, I won't, I won't curse. Just let me pay for my bowl. I'll get, the, I'll get out. I'll get the fuck out of here. Then she pulls again. I, didn't I tell you not to curse? I'm like, okay, I'll, okay, I'll, I won't pay. I'll pay. I'll, I won't curse. Then she finally, she just says, you know what? Just get the fuck out of here. Don't come back. And she let me go with the bowl. For free. I got $13.15 15 cents out of Chipotle for free. Do I want to do an analysis of that? Uh, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have called the little the little kid. Whatever. He wasn't a kid. He looked like a man. He was one of the midget Mexicans or whatever. The midget South Americans, right? I don't know. I guess he thought he was back in Ecuador when they were like... Uh, you know, they could live off, like, a fucking one-ounce portion of fucking beef, you know, for the day or for the month or some shit. And they're good, right? <clears throat> so maybe I shouldn't have called him Mexican. Because that's what I said. I, I said, a little Mexican down down there, he just gave me, like, a little couple slivers of beef, you know? I mean, I, you know, it's, this ain't the third world, you know? And then uh, I guess I guess old boy shouldn't have fucking chimed in with his two cents about the commentary about the six ounce portions and shit, right? And um, for some reason, the guy he was with, the guy with the glasses and the hat, who chimed in with the six ounce portion comment, right? He was some he was with some other some white guy, some bald white guy, right? With glasses, right? And the white guy says, "Listen, man." I'll cover this guy's this guy's burrito bowl, motioning towards me and my burrito bowl. He's like offering to pay for my burrito bowl. I guess that's how I got away with the free uh, burrito bowl. I don't know. I don't know. Not much to say about that. Was I an asshole? Hey, I mean, I got what I wanted, even though I'm barred from that fucking Chipotle now. I figure I throw some more analysis of these situations I go through. I don't throw enough analysis through. I just go, I just do the play-by-play, and then and, uh, that's good enough for me. Why in that? Why analyze? I just lay, I just leave it up to you to make your own decisions. But I'll do a little analysis of that, just to heighten the fucking story, you know. Okay, old school men. Ah, uh, yeah, there is a difference between old school men and you know men of. Men of, of today's age or whatever, today's era. Like, um, you don't see many fucking old guys on YouTube. Like the 60 year olds, 60, 70 year olds. Like, this isn't even their fucking their realm, their realm of existence, you know? Because honestly, you know, most of the time, you know, men in their 40s, they get on this YouTube, they start making videos, and they just want to bitch and whine. I'm one of them, right? Most old school guys, they don't, they don't fucking bitch or whine. They just kind of take it, you know? That mentality, just going to, going to the same job for, the, for like, you know, 30, 40 fucking years and shit, right? Don't complain, just stay on track. Yeah, they don't do this fucking YouTube shit. I don't know, I don't know what I'm getting at, man, but there there is a definite difference between, you know, 
old school men and men of today's era. A militia streak. I guess that's pertaining to me because uh, I do have a militia streak somewhat. Like I see an opportunity to be an asshole and I just I just go with the flow. Like I like it's just sitting there like a like a fucking uh like a golf ball, you know? Like the world's biggest golf ball in the tee, right? You just wanna smack the shit out of it. You're walking by it on the greens or whatever, on a golf course, you wanna take a club and just, just smack the shit out of that golf ball in the tee, right? That's my reasoning for being my for being malicious the way I am sometimes, you know? I see an opportunity and I just fucking go with it. I just want to smack the shit out of that fucking situation. Pussy Noogie. Pussy Noogie. It's a good name for a band. Pussy Noogie. I see him I call my book that Pussy Noogie. I'm calling a book that. Yeah, you know, when you ever have, like, you're fucking your girlfriend, she starts, like, having a conversation with you and shit, like, while your dick's in her cunt, right? Like, while you're trying to fucking use her cunt as a fucking cum bucket. Like, my girlfriend, she's got this technique with her cunt, right? Like, I pump it enough with my dick, she starts, like, tightening up on that shit, right? She forms, like, this perfect little hole. Like, this tight, wet hole in her pussy, right? And I start working at it, working at that with my dick. Trying to give her, trying to give that little hole a noogie with my dick, right? You don't know what I mean by noogie. You know, you take your knuckle, your middle knuckle, and you protrude it out from the rest of your knuckle. So it forms, like, a little... A little bump, right? Put your, put your fucking protruded knuckle out there, extended like that, right? And you go in, and maybe a nerve on somebody's body, right? Give him a little noogie. That's what it is. That's what I'm doing with my dick inside her cunt, right? That little tight little hole she's got, right? You know, blow my load real good in that cunt, right? Four times this weekend, right? Anyways, the previous week, my girlfriend, she's like, uh, well, you need, a, you don't need to be. You don't need to be fucking me this much. While my dick's in her cunt. While she's on her back with her legs spread, right? I'm sitting there trying to blow my wad and shit in her pussy, right? She starts she starts with me, uh, well you don't need to be fucking me that much. This much or whatever. So I ask her, so I tell her, I mean, who else am I supposed to fuck? And with that, she just shut up and turned her head to the side and kept her legs spread. And I finished off, finished my wad up, you know, finished blowing my wad in her. And, and then, I, you know, she rolled back over on her side and I fucking uh, stuck my wet dick in her ass. And then, uh, you know, we both went to sleep. <clears throat> I don't know why I brought that up, but I did. Oh, so, you know, I know my girlfriend, she's like a little bit of a flake, right? She's kind of wishy-washy, you know? She admits it. She said to me, you know, to paraphrase, you know, you know we like to change our minds, meaning women like to change their minds about shit. Like, uh, one day she says she wants to marry me, the other day she don't want to marry me. I think she's sure about she says she definitely wants to stay with me for the rest of her life but even then I kind of doubt that you know I mean she says it but like she said she, she said she's kind of wishy-washy so just to test her out right I always like to remind her that we got a that we got a lifelong commitment even though it ain't really it ain't etched in stone you know it ain't, it ain't like a, a blood a blood bond or whatever you know Whatever you, we intermingled our fucking blood by way of a by way of a slit palm with a, a fucking uh, you know 
a, a, a deer horn, a deer antler fucking knife, whatever. We didn't split our hands, you know, our, our uh, palms open, you know, to make a blood pact or anything, you know. We don't have that kind of fucking, that kind of union. But, you know, we pretty much committed, you know, each other, ourselves to each other for the rest of our lives, right? And, uh, you know, every once in a while, I like to just, like, test her out and see what the fuck's going through her head. So I asked her, you know, wow, what? You know, what's going to happen when I'm, when, I'm fucking, when I'm fucking you two times a day for the rest of your fucking life? And, you know, she, you, you, could, you could sense the dread in her voice, you know? <laughs> and that's, that's the kind of effect I'm looking for. I, I just like to remind her. Like that lifelong commitment bullshit, you know? She wants it, you know, she says she wants it. But, but you know, the, the, the act of saying something and actually carrying through with it, completely two different fucking things on opposite sides of the spectrum, right? So every once in a while, you know, like I said, I like to, I like to test it out. I like to test her out, you know? A reminder that we got this whole lifelong verbal commitment between each other, right? Just a reminder. And then when I start asking her questions like, well, you know, I would be fucking you for the rest of your life, right? You can hear that dread in her voice. She rolls her eyes and shit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to communicate dread in a woman's voice, but it goes something like, oh, God. Something like that, you know. I don't know if she, does that mean she's not lifelong committed to me? And I asked her about that. She said, no, you're just trying to make it all about sex all the time. I said, well, I don't know. I mean, as long as I get my dick up, I can still get it in you. I want to be fucking. She says, well, maybe you're not even going to be interested in that shit by the time we reach 80 or 70 or whatever. I said, maybe I will. And she gives me the, oh, like I got to fuck this guy for the rest of my life. <laughs> it makes me question her lifelong commitment to me. But I'll take her word for it. She says she wants to do it. She wants to stay with me for the rest of her life. So I'll just take her word for it, I guess. Ah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> well, I didn't have that much money notes. Well, 17, 18 minutes, I don't know. I guess that's good enough. Uh, that'll conclude my 52nd uh, uh, edition of talking from my asshole. Good luck dying.